What's going on everyone? This is Derek from Active Motion Bar. You know, given that it's the holiday season, our company is donating 5% of all of our sales to fund dementia and Alzheimer's research. I thought it would be really important to kind of talk about what dementia is and how Active Motion Bar can specifically benefit those who suffer from one of these ailments. Now, dementia is a general term that references any type of decline in mental ability severe enough to start to impact everyday life. The most common form of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, which is marked by inflammation and buildup of amyloid plaque that begins in the hippocampus and spreads to the frontal and temporal lobes. These regions of our brain are largely responsible for things like memory, thinking, behavior, allows you to articulate your thoughts verbally. That's why a lot of people with Alzheimer's have difficulty communicating, all right? Now, the greatest known risk factor for Alzheimer's is actually increasing in age. Uh, about four and a half to five million Americans currently live and deal with Alzheimer's on a daily basis right now. And according to the American Academy of Neurology, that number, four and a half to five million, could actually as much as triple by the year 2050 as our baby boomer population increases in age. Now, another form of dementia is called Parkinson's disease. This is a little more difficult to understand. Basically what you have is a region of the brain called the substantia nigra. This area produces dopamine, okay, which is a neurotransmitter. Think of neurotransmitters as little chemicals that help speed up messages carried in the brain. Well, when this region of the brain, the substantia nigra, produces dopamine, everything is good. But as we age, sometimes this production of dopamine decreases. Another area of your brain called the basal ganglia needs dopamine to send signals to produce movement to your muscle tissue. In people with Parkinson's, because their dopamine, uh, their ability to produce dopamine is inhibited, their movement's affected. And with this decrease in dopamine, there's little tremors and stutters that occur uh, in the communication channels between the brain and the muscles. That's why you see physically these tremors take place in people with Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease usually occurs later in life, say over the age of 60, and it actually affects about 1% of the United States population currently over the age of 60. Now, you guys, what's really exciting is one of the most promising preventative and treatment approaches to any form of dementia is exercise. So not only does exercise stimulate the basal ganglia and all these other regions of the brain, but it actually helps produce the neurotransmitters and neurotropic factors that help regenerate and build your brain cells. So think of exercise as kind of a miracle grow for your brain, all right? So engaging in movement helps stimulate certain regions of the brain, even muscles, to produce these growth factors and neurotransmitters that help spur and ignite all this wonderful growth in your brain. There's a number of scientific research studies that have found exercise can significantly help uh, slow down the development of symptoms associated with not only Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, but many other forms of dementia. Now, if you suffer from dementia or you're in an occupation where you help people who suffer from dementia, I wanna share with you some of the training protocols that science suggests works the best for helping improve brain cell health. First of all, you guys, aerobic activity. Science has shown that training for 30 minutes at a heart rate that's equal to about 60% of your max heart rate produces the best effects when it comes to boosting uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is that miracle grow for your brain, as well as all the neurotransmitters and other growth factors. Now, second is dynamic, complex motor skills. And this is where the discussion of active motion bar is gonna start to come in. Because what science has shown is when we're engaged in activities, that kind of force us to use different regions of our brain to coordinate movement effectively, that is when these regions are stimulated more and start to produce more of these growth factors and neurotransmitters to help facilitate all the processes taking place, all these wonderful new processes that are illuminating our brain. So think about the first time you went to ride a bike, or if you ever participated in a sport or an activity that was complex, like martial arts or dancing, you feel awkward, right? It's because your brain isn't used to those types of movement patterns. So the communication from here to different segments of your body isn't established. 
But what science shows, especially with people who have dementia, is that engaging in movement patterns that involve complex motor skills is an extremely good thing as we ignite and illuminate these new neural channels and force the development of all those wonderful growth factors and neurotransmitters that contribute to the regeneration of our brain cells. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna explain how and why active motion bar can significantly help get that brain illuminated, heighten the central nervous system, get the muscle and the body activated in new dynamic ways, and hopefully help you or your patients or your clients ward off the negative effects of dementia. So what I have with me right here is a four and a half pound active motion bar. Okay, this is the one that we recommend basically everyone starts with. Unless you are a much older individual with significant limitations, you can back it down to our three pound variation. Otherwise, start here with a four and a half. But these look like regular exercise bars, right? But if I shift the bar back and forth, you're gonna hear something different. Active motion bars are hollow and they are filled with ball bearings that shift inside. Now, this is very unique and it lends itself very well to creating that dynamic uh, motor skill training environment that we discussed earlier. Because of the fact that there's weight shifting in the bar, first of all, your sense of touch is heightened, which ignites a different part of your brain. Also, you hear the weight shifting in the bar. Your auditory senses are heightened, further igniting the brain. As you're trying to coordinate movement and stabilize this active motion bar, and you've got all these senses turned on, what we're doing is we're taking the level at which the brain is engaged and cranking it up. One of the first things that happens with an individual that suffers from dementia is their ability to coordinate movement goes down. And with that, balance decreases and body awareness decreases. So just the simple act of putting an active motion bar in one's hands and feeling that weight shift heightens sense of body awareness, right? Because now we have some level of assessment if I'm tipping to the left or if I'm tipping to the right. The bar is gonna tell me. And that's a really useful feedback tool as we kind of feel and hear our imbalances and develop that awareness of our body's position and when it's being put off balance, okay? That's one of the main uh, benefits of using active motion bar. So there's two ways that we're gonna use it. One is where we're using it kind of as an assessment tool like that, where we're trying to keep the bar nice and level as we're engaging in some other movement pattern. Now, another way that we're gonna use it is to purposely put our body off balance and create a higher level of muscle activation. And in those exercises, instead of trying to keep the bar level, we're gonna shift it from one side to the other. And that weight shifting is gonna create kind of a momentous effect, similar to if you've ever done like a medicine ball toss with somebody and you catch that heavy ball and it <laughs> gives some oomph when you catch it. Same thing here. It's gentle, but there's enough shifting mass in this bar to create an activation effect as you're moving in a multi-planar way or if you're bending or you're rotating. So those are the two ways we're gonna use the bar. One, where it's level, creating assessment and awareness. Two, where we're putting our body off center, creating activation, tipping and tilting. So what we're gonna do now, you guys, is we're gonna go over five great exercises to do if you have dementia, if you suffer from Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or another form of dementia, or if you're a fitness professional or a clinician, great movements that you can prescribe to your patients to do right now. I have a four and a half pound active motion bar here. The first thing that we're gonna do is a seemingly simple exercise that really does challenge the body dynamically in a complex pattern. Um, we're gonna first of all instruct our patient or client to hold the active motion bar on those white lines. I'm gonna turn to the side here. Uh, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to keep that resistance shifting in the bar as stable as we can, okay? So you're gonna always feel it moving. And the goal here is to try to keep it centered, okay? It's always gonna move, always give you feedback, and that's okay. Trying to keep that bar centered and stable, all we're gonna do is a heel to toe walk. You're gonna take one foot, bring it in front of the other, make contact between the heel and toe, and move forward. And hopefully you can hear the weight in the active motion bar shifting, and that's actually giving me feedback, right? 
as I hear that weight, as I try to keep it quiet, and as I feel it move, it's engaging different segments in my brain that are heightening my level of awareness. So this is actually a lot more challenging than it looks. And as you can see, I travel backwards. Now, if we want to progress this exercise a bit, we can have uh, the individual extend the arms in front or maybe even bring them overhead to where that bar is out of sight and they really have to rely more on those senses, feeling and hearing the active motion bar shift. But again, this is a great exercise to challenge the brain in a dynamic new way. And it's pretty, uh, it's, it's not intimidating. It's a very low level of intimidation exercise. Okay, that, so it's a great one to start with. Now, let's progress a little bit. Let's grab the bar on those white lines and stagger the feet. And, you know, when we bring the body into this position, we're a little less stable. I'm not saying get into an athletic base. I'm saying get into a position where your feet are staggered, almost like where you're on a tightrope again. So one foot behind the other, less stable. We're gonna hinge forward at the hips. Now from this position here, we're gonna try to keep neutral. And this time we're actually gonna purposely bring the body center of mass off balance by shifting the weight inside the bar down to one end and then shifting it to the other end and let the trunk, the upper body move with the shifting of that weight in the bar. And you can see every time I take that bar and I drop it to one end, all the ball bearings in the bar shift to that end and it pulls me a little bit, right? It's forcing me to react and respond to a stimulus that's pulling me off balance. Again, another wonderful thing, not only to train balance, but to get the brain more involved in our exercise. So this is just a, a, a staggered position, shift. And obviously we would do the other side, okay? Trying to stay stable. If we wanna progress the movement a little bit, we can start to come up onto the toe on the back leg or even come up onto a single leg if that's something that you're ready for, all right? So that is our staggered stance tip and tilt. Now the third exercise we're gonna engage in is called the step over. And you're gonna need an object to literally step over. I have a Rolga foam roller here. You can use a yoga block, a dumbbell, anything to get on the floor and create a little bit of a barrier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna position the barrier somewhere on the floor next to the individual, okay? And keeping the active motion bar at the chest stable like we were before, all the individual is going to do is attempt to step over the, the object on the floor, one foot and then the other, while keeping stable and keeping their active motion bar stable. This is a lot easier said than done again because of that weight shifting inside the bar. So trying to keep it centered and stable, I'm gonna start by just doing a lateral step here, okay? One foot after the other. After the individual gets used to doing this, which this honestly isn't a very challenging task, but for someone with dementia it might be, we can start to move the roller or the, the barrier further from the body, which is gonna be a greater challenge, or um, in just different areas dynamically around the body. So maybe I put it in front, maybe I put it side, maybe I put it to the back, okay? But doing this really ups the challenge of any movement. Now it's further and it's off at an angle as I'm forced to step one foot after the other and then I'm gonna bring it back again. And you can hear the weight shifting in my bar pretty dramatically as I'm trying to find my center here. Another great way to provide a greater challenge is to increase the height of the object you decide to put on the floor. Either way, this is called the step over, and that was our third exercise. All right, you guys, our fourth exercise, really simple, really functional. It's called a sit down. It's also called a squat. What we're gonna do is show you a couple cool variations though. The first going to be bringing the bar to the chest again. Now you can have a chair here, literally, and have the individual sit in a chair and then come back up all while trying to stabilize their active motion bar, which makes it much more challenging. I'm gonna do it without a chair here. So I'm gonna set my feet just outside the shoulders and I'm gonna bring it down into a, in a hinge position. In my squat, I'm gonna make sure I drive my hips back, flex my knees, keep my chest upright and erect, keep a nice good athletic posture and then bring it back up. Now, 
What we can do here to progress is we can extend the arms out in front of the body is another option. If you do have a platform behind the individual, like a chair, you can challenge them with the lower platform to help them get deeper into that squat and then come back out. Another thing we can do is bring it to a single leg. Now this gets much more dynamic, much more challenging, but if I bring it up to a single leg and do like a, a little quarter range of motion squat, that might be a good progression. Half range of motion squat, another good progression. Or if you are a very advanced athlete, you could maybe try a pretty dynamic uh, pistol squat where you're going all the way down and driving it back up in uh, a much more advanced variation. Either way, all those are great challenges for somebody, probably not the last one, but uh, especially the sit down and stand back up while stabilizing the active motion bar. Great exercise, that's number four. Our fifth and final exercise is going to be pretty involved. Remember we were talking about the importance of engaging in dynamic exercises that involve complex motor skills to get different areas of the brain illuminated when we train in an effort to produce all those wonderful neurotropic factors and neurotransmitters that help build our brain cells. This is gonna be one of those exercises. It's gonna be a movement where we combine kind of creating a pattern with the bar as we shift the weight, along with a pattern uh, with our lower extremities as we step in different directions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my feet just outside the shoulders and I'm gonna start with my hands on those white lines. Now I'm gonna instruct my client to get their hands out in front of their body. If the active motion bar is a little too heavy, if there's any pain in the shoulders, you can just have them bring the bar closer to their body, taking the load off of the deltoids and putting it in other regions, okay? Now, either way, in close or away, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just shifting the weight in the bar from one side to the other. Just that sensation of feeling and hearing the weight shifting in the bar and the, the effect that that has on the body. So as that weight shifts, I can physically feel activation here, here in my backside as my erector spinae are engaged to prevent me from falling forward. All those things are great ways to get new areas of the brain engaged and new muscles engaged as we train. But here's what we're gonna do. After we get done with this little tipping and tilting pattern, every time I flip the bar in one direction, I'm gonna take a step in that same direction out to the side and squat. Okay, and as I come back in, I'm gonna turn it back down. Okay, now we're engaging in a little bigger pattern here. A little more dynamic than we were before. And then obviously we could do the same thing on the other side. So as I flip my bar down to the left, I step out with my left foot and I squat. And then as I stand and bring it back into the right, the right end of the bar tips down and I stand back up. And then we repeat. Now as a final progression to that, as you stand, you could also move into a squat. So I'm gonna show you what that might look like here. We're gonna come down. Now as I step out, I squat. As I come back in facing the camera, I squat again. So now we've just taken the exercise and we've added a squat at the start and end range of motion, okay? Just coordinating that movement alone can be difficult, but once the rhythm and the coordination is developed, it's a great exercise and it's actually a fun movement pattern to get more dynamic and more challenging with as you progress. Thanks for watching you guys. I really hope you learned a thing or two about dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and how we can use exercise to help prevent and treat these negative conditions. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to us uh, at admin at activemotionbar.com or check out our website at www.activemotionbar.com. Thank you.